Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible and turn to the book of Isaiah. We're going to go to chapter 10. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. In other words, evil laws. So, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness which they have prescribed. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows might be their prey, P-R-E-Y, and that they may rob the fatherless. That's right, greedy rich people, they steal even from those poor that have little and nothing. But what about in verse 3? And what will ye do in the day of visitation? That's right, what are you going to do in the day that the Lord comes? What you going to do? And in the desolation which shall come from far, to whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. Verse 6. I will send him against an hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil, and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Now remember, Assyria was used to take Israel, northern Israel, into captivity. That's what it meant when he said, I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. That's exactly what he's saying. So let's go to verse 7. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Calno as Kar Shemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? Now evidently Samaria conquered Damascus. And Samaria was conquered by um, the Assyrians. Verse 10. As my hand hath found the kingdom of the idols, whose and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? 
Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood. No, sorry, Assyrian. The Lord allowed you to do what you did. Matter of fact, the uh, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he had the same problem, and the Lord humbled him, I think, for seven years. Verse 16, Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory, glory shall he kindle a burning like the burning of a fire, and the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. That's right. In the second coming, look out. The day of the Lord, the day of Christ. I'm sorry, it's not two different events. It's the same event. And it happens at the end of the tribulation. Verse 18. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. Now, what was a standard bearer? Yeah, it's sort of like when the U.S. Cavalry was attacking the Indians. He was the one that was carrying the flag. So, a standard bearer fainting, that was like the guy that was carrying the flag into battle when he fell down. And that's what it means when they talk about a standard bearer fainteth. And the rest, verse 19, And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwelleth, dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee, after the manner of Egypt. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb, and as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He has come to Alaph. He has passed to Migron. At Mishmash he hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Gibba. Ramah is afraid. Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galam. Cause it to be heard unto Laish, O poor Anathoth. Mad Minah is removed. The inhabitants of Gibbim gather themselves to flee. As yet shall he remain at Nob that day. He shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror, 
and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. Now remember, God used Assyria to punish northern Israel. But then came, came Babylon, which destroyed the Assyrian Empire, and Israel was allowed to leave the Assyrian captivity. So just kind of keep that in mind. And um, the book of Daniel records where Babylon conquered all the known world. Babylon was consider considered, the, to my knowledge, the first great world power because she had conquered pretty much all the known world at that time. And the last end world power, Mystery Babylon, well, that gives you an idea of what it will be like in the end time, of what it was like back when Babylon was running the show. You can read about that in the book of Daniel. The... Old Testament gives you a shadow of how things will be in the future. God's plans don't change generally. They don't seem to change. The plagues of Egypt mimic the plagues of Revelation. So if you don't have a foundation in the Old Testament, well, then people read the New Testament, read the book of Revelation, and they say, well, I just don't understand it. Well, how can you? All the symbolism comes from the Old Testament. You know, you pick up a novel and you read the last 10 pages. You think you're going to understand the story? No, it doesn't work that way. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, His only begotten Son. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to them. In Jesus' name, amen.